You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. Dimitar Berbatov was the luxury centre forward. Decadently gifted and someone to whom the games seemed to come easily, the Bulgarian played to his own rhythm. And yet beyond that laissez-faire attitude and velvet touch lay a story which began humbly, was threatened by organised crime and which even today has left a peculiar legacy. This is a brief history of Dimitar Berbatov. Humble is the right way to describe Berbatov's beginnings. He was born in the early 1980s and grew up in the final days of communist Bulgaria. As a child and often without a football to play with, he practiced his juggling with a basketball, or failing that, an actual pig's bladder. Nevertheless, by 2001, he had established himself at CSKA Sofia, and a move to the Bundesliga's Bayer Leverkusen would follow. But not before dark forces would interfere. When Georgi Ilyev, the owner of rivals Lokomotiv Plovdiv, attempted to coerce the teenage Berbatov into signing for his club instead, it was a turbulent beginning. Still, Berbatov evaded Ilyev and Leverkusen would pay just over £2 million to sign him. Tall and rangy, but predatory and stylish, he was a good fit for a German side that was endowed with quality players, and would also reach the final of the Champions League in 2002. Berbatov wasn't quite a first-team regular by then, but he was still an influence from the bench, and Liverpool fans witnessed his finishing abilities firsthand during that campaign, as his close-range goal helped knock Gerard Houllier's side out of the Champions League at the quarter-final stage on the way to the Hampton Park final. And over the next four years, Berbatov evolved into something special. Leverkusen remained around the top six, one bizarre flirtation with relegation in 2003 aside, and the Bulgarians' goals were a constant in a changing side. More to the point, his range of strikes became increasingly diverse. Berbatov was a penalty box predator. Good in the air, quick to a loose ball, but he was also a wandering creative threat and possessed one of the finest first touches of any player in the Bundesliga. Of course, it was those qualities combined that convinced Tottenham to spend £14 million on the centre-forward in the summer of 2006. At White Hart Lane, again, Berbatov would find himself in a fluid situation. Spurs were a flawed but often entertaining team, and they weren't without talent. Theirs was a side that included England goalkeeper Paul Robinson, centre-back Ledley King, midfielders Jermaine Genus and Aaron Lennon, and forwards Jermaine Defoe and Robbie Keane, but who were far from being part of English football's elite. At Spurs, Berbatov scored 23 all-competition goals in back-to-back -back seasons, including a stunning falling volley against Middlesbrough away, an inch-perfect free kick against West Ham, four in one game against Reading, and most memorably, an ice-cold penalty to equalise in the 2008 League Cup final against Chelsea, in a game which would see Tottenham win their most recent trophy. But it was a club in flux, struggling to reconcile its history with its contemporary place outside of the money elite. And the better he played, the more obvious it became that he would eventually have to leave. Manager Martin Yol would be replaced by Juan de Ramos in Berbatov's second season, and despite winning a trophy and building a telepathic partnership with Robbie Keane, by the summer of 2008, having been the subject of ceaseless transfer rumours for some time, he was heading for another move. And it arrived in the final hours of the transfer window, as he joined Manchester United for just over £30 million. In one of his autobiographies, Alex Ferguson wrote that Berbatov displayed the ability of Eric Cantona or Teddy Sheringham. Not lightning quick, but he could lift his head and make a creative pass. And he could do all of that and more, but he was joining at a difficult time. United were European champions, and Berbatov was moving to a club who already had Carlos Tevez, Cristiano Ronaldo and Wayne Rooney, arguably the best front three in the world. Where and how he would fit in was unclear. And while Ronaldo and Tevez would leave within a year, Berbatov's time at Old Trafford still lacked fulfilment. And there were difficulties in his personal life too. In 2009, a year after joining, it was reported that Berbatov had fled his native Bulgaria after Mafia figures had telephoned his mother in Sofia, making a threat to kidnap his girlfriend and daughter. It was the second time the underworld had impinged upon his career. Back on the pitch, Berbatov would win the Premier League twice in his four years and also win the competition's golden boot in 2011. Added to which, he produced one of the most mesmerising pieces of skill the Premier League had and has ever seen. 
rouletting down the goal line to set up a tap-in for Cristiano Ronaldo. It's a clip that of course never ages, but like his overhead kick against Liverpool, which was part of a match-winning hat-trick, it probably flattered his effect at United, where the side often seemed to function at a different speed to which he was comfortable. United lost two European Cup finals during those four years, both to Barcelona. And while Berbatov had come off the bench in the first in Rome in 2009, he didn't even make the squad for the second in 2011. It reflected his status and his awkward role. More importantly, it wounded him, and reportedly was the reason why upon leaving United a year later, he did so without saying goodbye to Alex Ferguson. The two would reconcile in later years, but it was a long farewell for Berbatov, who featured in just 12 Premier League games in those final 12 months and whose Manchester United career should probably have amounted to much more. Writing for The Guardian in 2012, after Robin Van Persie had been signed as his replacement, Daniel Taylor captured the contradictory nature of his time at Old Trafford. Berbatov has exasperated and exhilarated in equal measure. He's played with our minds, bewitched us in good moments and bemused us in the bad. Now at Fulham, he would recapture some of the talismanic influence he'd left behind at Tottenham. It would reunite him with Martin Yoll, under whom he'd arguably played his best Premier League football, and that manifested in a flurry of late career goals. His form would prompt Yoll into giving one of the great quotes about Berbatov, describing his sublime touch. Everything he seemed to pluck out of the sky, everything seemed to die on his toe. But of course he was more than just aesthetics. Berbatov would score 15 times in his first season, and Fulham eased to Premier League safety. He would leave halfway through the second, though, with the club heading for relegation and would begin an Indian summer in France with Monaco. Berbatov was a declining force by the time he reached Liga, but his core skills, his touch, technique, positioning and his awareness survived the ageing process and he was still good enough to drop an occasional moment of class on Twitter timelines. His nonchalant lob against Nice, for example, or the beguiling run against Evian, which saw him twist one more defence into a collective knot. He also found time during those 18 months to score a critical away goal at the Emirates, which would see Monaco knock Arsenal out of the 2015 Champions League. Dimitar Berbatov was a player of moments, and that was one more, before he began the journey to retirement with short stops in Greece and India, completing the CV of one of the most cultish players of the last few decades, and someone who rarely, if ever, shortchanged those who pay to watch. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalized experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions, and podcasts. Not to mention, it's all ad-free. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.